Well, John Ramsey and his son, John Andrew Ramsey, join us now from their homes in Utah and Colorado. Thank you both for joining us today. Um, John, I have to start with you. You know, I was watching CNN this weekend, and they were doing a retrospective of the life of Larry King, and I saw you and Patsy uh, as one of the guests on that show all of those years ago, and I thought to myself, wow, he's talking with me in a couple of days. Why relive this pain? As we pointed out, you and Patsy were cleared um, after she died. Why relive it now? Well, when we were cleared, uh, for us, it wasn't a, a moment of celebration. It was a moment where we felt like, okay, now let's get on with finding the killer of our child. Uh, and we did. And the district attorney's office did just that. So it was a stepping stone in our objective to find the killer of our child. John Andrew. And, and that we're still in that pursuit, yeah. you know, this hasn't been solved. And um, we're gonna keep the pressure on, we're gonna keep uh, being public about it in hopes that we can get more information, uh, pressure the police to do their job, whatever it takes. Which is remarkable that here you are all these years later saying you have to pressure the police to continue to investigate John Bonet's death. Why wouldn't they want to know who did this? Why not pursue this? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, it seems logical that they should devote a lot of effort to it. It's probably one of the most notorious uh, murders, and certainly a murder of child, uh, that occurred in their community. And uh, to just let it uh, go dormant and hope that it goes away is not the right answer. And. Uh, it's been frustrating for us uh, to see that happen, and um, we're just not willing to let it die. It, it's yeah. got to yeah. got to have a resolution. This the resolution isn't for my sake, mm -hmm. uh, as much as it is for my children and their children. Uh, this is a a, a cloud that's going to hang over our family until we find the the answer and. Um, that's why it's important to me. And this show is about, you know, an hour of people who are taking the stand, no matter the consequences, no matter what they're facing. John Andrew, you're John Bonet's half brother. You were 20 years old, away at college when she was murdered, and you were one of the first family members to be cleared by investigators. But even then, the suspicion, as your father pointed out, hovered over the heads of your family to the point where here you are all these years later, you're still taking on, you know, the police, the media you know, folks out in the public who still believe that your family had something to do with it, that you're still having to take this stand, despite, by all accounts, overwhelming evidence that clears your family. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point you're making. Um, you know, what's the motivation for my father and I to be doing this 24 years on? Uh, without question, our lives would be easier if we could just turn the corner and walk away, mm. uh, or if we had um, confidence uh, in the Boulder Police to, um, you know, to to, to act, you know investigate this crime. But uh, here we are. You know, my my father's been uh, speaking out for 24 years. Um, I'm happy to to help him uh, in that cause because, uh, you know, ultimately we think um, that this is a case that can be solved and should be solved. For John Bonet family and for the community at large. John, you know, looking at that clip of you, uh, as any parent would, knowing the details of what happened to John Bonet, but I was struck by um, Detective Smith, and this is the investigator who believed all along that you and Patsy were innocent, that you had nothing to do with it. In this documentary, he makes a point about that ransom note that Patsy found, which referred to taking John Bonet's life if, if demands were not met and some very graphic language of what would happen to her if you didn't comply. And Detective Smith always said no parent would write that letter, that the state of mind um, did not match the two people that you and Patsy were. Why was he so, do you think, devoted to clearing your names other than justice, clearly? Well, I think, I think uh, he number one, was interested in justice. And Lou had a mantra that was, that he stood in the victim's shoes uh, in murder cases because no one else could. And 
his focus was on finding the killer of John Bonet, and, and that was his passion. And secondarily, as he wrote in his resignation letter, uh, I'm not going to be part of uh, prosecuting innocent people. And he resigned from the uh, district attorney's office at the time. So, you know, he was a, he, Lou was a real detective. He was a real life Columbo. Mm. Uh, he'd mm. solved over 200 homicides, many of them cold cases. And he was quite a legend in Colorado and had impeccable credentials. Which is so, shocking why he was dismissed and what he found was dismissed. And John Andrew, you know, they were convinced that police were convinced that Patsy had um, hit John Bonet, accidentally taken her life and covered up her murder and staged all of this. Detective Smith said the DNA found on John Bonet proved otherwise. I want to play a clip of, of what he theorized happened there. This foreign DNA does not belong to Patsy, for sure. Now, it is male. They cannot say who it is. So that does not completely eliminate John Ramsey. However, it does not include him at all. Either. So, John Andrew, what did he ultimately, Detective Smith, believe happened that night? What is his theory? Well, yeah, that audio diary is, is of course, uh, you know, beginning in the the mid '90s. But, um, but you know, the the intruder theory is kind of based on the fact that uh, someone entered our home, uh, lied in wait, um, used a stun gun on John Bonet, um, and carried her to the basement um, where she was killed. Um, you know, the note could have been written before or after. We don't know, um, but that but that note is uh, deeply meaningful to the killer. Um, it's it's filled with um, with fantasies, delusional fantasies and thoughts. Uh, direct quotes from from a lot of different movies, um, and, and you know, based on research now, we know that that these guys, people that do this, um, are are driven by fantasy of, of one form or the other. It's clear in that note who this person is. John, I know that in 2016, CBS aired a series that implicated your son, uh, Burke, who was at home at the time a minor. Um, and you filed a $750 million lawsuit, defamation suit, which they settled. Um, you keep having to take these stands against um, the odds. Where do you see this going? I mean, is this documentary your last hand in the deck? so to speak. No, I don't think so. I mean, I hope it would be that we'd, we'd uh, move ahead and find a solution. But uh, we'll keep after this uh, until I die or until we have a solution. Um, it, um, we have no, no intention of, of not doing that. We're going to have you more. Know, we, we look at the media as a way to communicate uh, re reinvigorate the information on this case, and we hope that somebody would come forward with information that would be helpful in solving it. And uh, someone out there knows something, uh, I have no doubt. And um, we just hope that they are motivated and have the compassion to come forward and share that. John Andrew, the, the question then still remains. You have all this DNA evidence. Some of it's not even tested. Who do you believe killed John Bonet? Uh, that's a good question. All I know is uh, we've got the killer's DNA. We need to leverage that evidence. We need to bring in the very best forensic scientists and DNA experts in the country uh, and apply uh, new techniques and new technology and to identify exactly who this person is. Why hasn't and, uh, that been done? Why, do you, why, why hasn't that been done? I don't know. I, I wish it, I simply wish it would, right? Um, that would that would certainly make me sleep better at night. I think it would um, be good for the community of Boulder, yeah. uh, for the police to, to do the right thing here. Um, and, and we hope they do. That's, you know, by coming on the show today, that's, yeah. you know, one step that we can, you know, put, put some pressure on them to do the right thing. John, all these years later, is there someone whose name, for legal reasons, perhaps you cannot say, that is in the back of your mind that you believe murdered your daughter? Well, you know, there's been several people that have surfaced that I look at it and think, holy mackerel, that, those are the, that's the guy. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the first time that happened, our attorney said, whoa, 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 slow down. Don't do a Boulder police on us here. We don't know that yet. 
uh, one of the things that's been interesting to me uh, are these cold cases that have been solved uh, using familial DNA. And the, the, the person that was eventually arrested in those, like the Golden State Killer, yeah, they came out of left field. They were not on anybody's radar. Nobody had considered them a suspect. So that may be what happens in our, our case. I don't know. Mm. There's so many so heartbreaking I, I don't want to angles to, to this. There are people that are and I understand. There are so many heartbreaking angles, but I'll tell you, I remember being on air and the news came of Patsy's death, and I thought, my goodness, this woman went through her years of being accused of killing her daughter. She dies two years before this DNA. Um, how does that feel to you, knowing that until the end, she lived with this pain that none of us will understand being accused of killing your child. Well, Patsy was a very strong woman, and um, she was very devoted to her children, and at, particularly after John Monet died, she was very devoted to, to try and give Burke a, a normal childhood. Um, she knew who she was. Um, you know, the, the accusations, at least visibly, didn't seem to hurt her. Um, so what I, you know, the real tragedy, Patsy was a wonderful person, a wonderful mother, a kind person, uh, cared about other people. And she was so vilified in the media mm. that uh, that's just not right. And I'd love to set that straight somehow. Mm. Well, you're doing that now by taking a stand with this new documentary. And we appreciate you joining us today, John and John Andrew. Thank you for your time today. Well, thank you for having us on.